Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We love hearing from you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard or read about, 844 236 6010 is our number on the bright side. You can also purchase Longevity products by calling 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a Longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with having your own business, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you or your loved ones have noticed a difference or made a change in your health by getting on a nutritional supplement program, help spread the word. Be part of the solution. Help share the information. And make money at the same time. If you're an entrepreneur, it's an ideal way to start a business. Call 866-735-2470 for more info, 866-735-2470. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase your longevity products from brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All the longevity products are up. We've got news stories and blog posts as well, and also videos at brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, including our retinol 5% gel made with 5% retinol as well as a big dose of fat-soluble premium vitamin C in our transdermal base. That's it, just vitamin C, retinol, and our transdermal delivery system. No preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, water, silicon, oil, and any of our Truth Treatment products, Truth Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We have been talking electrolytes, cardiovascular disease. Last program, we were talking about salt, the much maligned molecule. Like cholesterol, it's been demonized and blamed for all manners of heart disease, circulatory disease, heart attacks, strokes, high blood pressure. Salt, which is technically a combination of two atoms, or molecules of positive and negative charges. When a positive charge and a negative charge come together, they form a certain kind of bond that's called a salt bond. It's kind of a chemical term, but for the most part, when we talk about salt, or when doctors talk about salt, or average folks talk about salt, they're referring to table salt, which is sodium chloride, which is about 60%, uh, around 40% sodium and about 60% chloride. It's a, a, a special kind of salt. So we're gonna use those terms interchangeably, but just know when we say salt, we mean table salt, which is sodium chloride. So the low, t the low salt diet should really be the low table salt diet, but we're just, we'll just say low salt diet or salt. We'll just talk about salt. Most everyone knows, doctors know, patients know, they got to keep their ingestion of table salt down, uh, down to a minimum if you're concerned about heart disease or if you have high blood pressure. Everybody knows you got to go on a low salt diet, but you know what? That may not be the case. Surprise, surprise. Maybe the mainstream is wrong. Well, they are, at least according to the book, 
and my opinion, according to the book of Salt Fix, which proves everything I've been saying, and Dr. Wallach, by the way, has been saying now for decades, you need salt. And there's really no conclusive evidence that salt is a problem. In the book, The Salt Fix, Dr. James D. Nicole Antonio, by the way, it's a great book, The Salt Fix, if you're interested in learning more about this subject, subtitled, Why the Experts Got It All Wrong and How Eating More Salt Might Save Your Life. Anyway, Dr. D. Nicole Antonio lays out a pretty compelling case that there's really very little evidence that salt is the cause of hypertension or heart disease or that a low-salt diet is something that, uh, that you want to include in as part of your, uh, as part of your uh, health regimen. In fact, according to the doctor, that opposite may be the case. Dr. D. Nicole Antonio, by the way, is also a pharmacologist in addition to being a doctor. And you know, if you've been listening to this program, The Bright Side, for any length of time, I've been saying this for years. You need sodium. You need chloride. They're essential nutrients. They are essential, mighty, 90 nutrients. Remember the word essential. That means you need it. We hear this term all the time, essential amino acids, essential nutrients, essential minerals. What does that mean? It's like air. Essential means it's like air. There's all kinds of like gobbledygook definitions of essential. As, oh, it's a nutrient that will cause a deficiency disease if it's missing in the diet. Well, that's true. Some people say an essential nutrient is a nutrient that you must have or else you suffer from some disease. Well, that's true, but I like to think of essential as air. An essential nutrient is like air. To be on a low sodium diet, a low salt diet, is like being on a low air diet. Does that make sense to anybody? Of course not. It's not. How can an essential nutrient be a problem? Well, it turns out, as we've talked about in the past, that sodium and chloride and all the electrolytes have to exist in a balance, and that's the problem. It's not quite like air in the sense that you don't have a balance of air, although I guess you could argue you have a balance of air oxygen and carbon dioxide, but you have a, there's a strict balance between sodium and potassium, between magnesium and calcium. All the electrolytes have to be in a balance. The problem isn't that we're getting too much table salt. It's that we've got sneaky places where sodium is stuck into our food. And there's another big problem too, which I'll talk about here in a second, but it's not that you need to go low salt. The body can't function effectively without salt. Cellular health depends on salt. And according to Dr. D. Nicole Antonio, salt restriction is associated not with good health, but with insulin resistance, with type 2 diabetes, with elevated cholesterol, with abnormal workloads on the heart, with kidney disease. If you want to restrict something to protect your heart, think sugar. That's what we should be restricting. Sugar, unlike salt, has been definitively linked to everything that's bad in the body, including heart disease, including kidney disease, including high blood pressure. Nobody argues that fact, including elevated insulin. Nobody argues that fact. Sugar's the problem. You want to restrict something, lay off the sugar, not the salt. In the book, The Salt Fix, Dr. D. Nicole Antonio takes us through the history of what he calls the salt wars, which is the great debate among doctors and medical researchers and uh, about salt and how important it is and how not important it is, uh, the relevance of sodium chloride to hypertension and heart disease. And much like the whole cholesterol mania, anti-cholesterol mania, the meme, the mind virus, that's what a meme is, it's a mind virus. Just like a virus doesn't care about you or me, it just cares about perpetuating itself. A mind virus is an information virus. It doesn't care about the people that spread it, me and you, the vector, that's what they call us, the vector. It just wants to perpetuate itself. Advertising uses memes, jingles are memes. There's lots of medical memes. Oh, I'm sick, I gotta go to the doctor. That's a meme. Oh, I have a cold, I need an antibiotic. That's a meme. Oh, I have a skin rash, I need a, a steroid cream. That's a meme. None of these things help us. None of these things support us. The vectors, the spreaders of the meme, they're just there to spread the meme, to, to perpetuate the bad information. Oh, my cholesterol's high, I need a statin drug. That's a meme. Oh, your cholesterol's too high, that's, heart to, that's uh, linked to heart disease, another meme. Well, guess what? The low salt idea is, a, is still yet another nasty health meme that doesn't care about the individuals who spread it, that just cares about itself. Anyway, so we got this anti-cholesterol meme and the anti-salt meme that kind of grew up at the same time, somewhere around the 50s and 60s. We'll talk about that here when uh, we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Back on the 
right side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you're dealing with heart disease issue or issues or you know somebody dealing with heart disease or any health challenge, we can help you, 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you want to contribute to the conversation or share a success story, we love those, 844 236 6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off our websites for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a Longevity business and enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business right off your home office, even right off your rent. If you have a home office, you can write off part of your rent anyway, wherever, whatever you use as your home office. That alone is worth 25 bucks right there. You can write off your stamps, your mileage. Of course, you can get your products at the wholesale price, and you can also help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program while you're making some money starting your own business with longevity. Call, uh, call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 if you want to talk to a real live human being, or if you uh, would rather just sign up off our, off our websites, head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And also, if you're interested in checking out some super high-end, very powerful and effective skin health products, if you're dealing with broken out skin, if you've got blemished skin, or uh, just thinning skin, anti-aging, uh, you've got age spots, you're interested in anti-aging, you need our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. Retinol is the go-to active ingredient in anti-aging. There is none. Zippo, nada, no active material, no material, period, more effective than retinol as a topical anti-aging product. Now, if you're using our retinol now, you know it's super effective. I know you know it because I get the letters. But you also know that it's really powerful. Don't overdo it. Use it once or twice a week. Some people can use it three times a week. you got to go by how your skin is. Use very small amounts. No other company wants to take a chance on giving you that much retinol because it's just such a powerful ingredient. But you know what? It works. It's amazing stuff. Plus, if you use my Truth Retinol 5% gel, you're going to get a big dose of vitamin C, which is, if not as important as retinol, it's pretty darn close. And the combination of retinol and vitamin C is powerful, powerful stuff. In fact, you don't need anything but vitamin C and retinol for anti-aging the skin and for skin health. In all the years that people have been studying skin, Nobody's been ever, ever been able to show that any ingredients actually will change the skin like retinol and vitamin C. And if you're not using those two ingredients, fat-soluble premium vitamin C, as well as retinol in your topical skincare regimen, your topical skincare program, you're truly missing the boat on topical skincare. And you don't need to miss the boat because you got my Truth Retinol 5% Gel up at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Okay, it's so back to salt here. Dr. D. Nicole Antonio, James D. Nicole Antonio, in the book The Salt Fix, lays out a pretty darn compelling case for the baloney associated with the low salt mean, the idea that we need to be restricting our salt. Dr. D. Nicole Antonio maps out something called the salt wars, which is um, the great debate between, uh, uh, between doctors and medical researchers about salt, whether you need salt, how good it is, how bad it is. According to uh, Dr. Dina Nicole Antonio, the conclusions that a low-salt diet is somehow good for us were drawn from poor studies, small sample sizes, and misinterpreted results and evidence. The first, the history of this whole thing about salt and low-salt and low-salt for, uh, for hypertension came from a couple of doctors back in 1904, Drs. Ambard and Drs. Beaujard, who reported that a salt restriction could lower blood pressure in some of their patients. And as the century progressed, more and more studies came out. It seemed to prove this conclusion out. They basically gave rats, this is, most of the studies were done on rats. They gave rats a bunch of salt, way more salt than they would ordinarily eat, and their blood pressure went up. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the salt's fault. It's just craziness. The problem, first of all, the results were inconsistent. It's not like every time they gave animals salt that the, their blood pressure went up. The results were inconsistent, and they could never show a really significant link between salt intake and hypertension and heart disease. And there's another problem, which I'll talk about here in a second. Continuing on with the history, in 1977, some of, you, some of you guys may remember this, George McGovern, Senator George McGovern, the guy who ran for president in 1972 and lost, uh, horrifically lost to Richard Nixon, uh, the greatest landslide in political history at the time. 
Anyway, he, he had this thing called the Select Committee on Nutrition and Health Needs. This was the, really the first time the government came together, uh, the senators came together and policymakers came together to really set health policy. They issued a report called, the, uh, or I should say, food health policy, they, uh, which, as it turned out, was more about lobbying and, and influenced by political, political shenanigans than anything else. Anyway, it was called the Dietary Goals for the United States. This was when cholesterol was officially demonized by the government. The low-salt diet was officially demonized for the first time. You had the, it was authorized by the federal government, the low-salt diet. Uh, up until then, it was just a hypothesis. After that, after 1977, it was standard dogma, official public policy. The, uh, the uh, Select Committee on Nutrition and Health Needs, as it was called, recommended a limit on daily salt intake. Then the National Academy of Sciences followed along. Other health organizations chimed in, and low-salt propaganda became the way to go. Low, it was all about low salt. Uh, the Time Magazine ran a cover story. I remember this when I was uh, just beginning pharmacy school. Time, 1982, Time Magazine ran a cover story. It had like killer salt. It had a picture of a salt shaker. Killer salt. Everybody was terrified of salt. Most doctors were, had bought into it. Salt was somehow bad for us. We had to eliminate salt, at reduce our salt. Reducing salt was the healthy thing to do. Now, in fairness, in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, 1980s, our understanding of health from a scientific and public policy sense was quite primitive. I was in pharmacy school in the 80s, and they were saying all kinds of crazy things. They were telling us you didn't need vitamin E. I remember that. Vitamin E was an unnecessary nutrient in, 19, in the 1980s. Nobody knew, really knew about insulin and sugar and uh, certainly didn't know about probiotics and digestive health. At least most people didn't, and the mainstream didn't really recognize any of these things. Doctors were still recommending that you eat margarine. Supplementation was considered to be unnecessary and a waste of time, a waste of money reserved for health nuts. There weren't at health food stores everywhere. You couldn't buy vitamins everywhere like you can today. Prescriptions and medical procedures were super low tech. 50% of Americans were smoking cigarettes. And heart disease was at the height of its prevalence. It had become the leading cause of death just recently. And medical authorities and lay people were terrified of this scourge. And they were searching frantically for a reason, particularly in terms of lifestyle choices that people were making. So when they focused on diet, salt, as well as fat, were the first things that researchers concentrated on, salt and fat. Fat because they noticed that there was fat in the blood vessels. They noticed that there was fat in the, in the heart vessels. So they assumed that it was the fat. They just logically said, oh, there's cholesterol and fat in your vessels. It must be the fat you're eating and the cholesterol you're eating. And because they had been doing research on salt for, since the beginning of the 1900s, they focused on salt as well. For some unknown mysterious reason, no one thought to focus on sugar and flour I'm, I'm sure it had something to do with the sugar lobby and farmers, but whatever. Sugar, of course, and flour, as it turns out, are much more likely suspects when it comes to cardiovascular and circulatory disease in the heart th than salt is. But nonetheless, they focused on salt, uh, fat and salt. Salt had been a suspect since uh, 1904 when Ambard and Beaujard made their, made their uh, report on salt and hypertension. But unfortunately, as with many things that seem to make sense in the world of health, it doesn't make much biological sense. There's not a lot of biological reasons for salt causing cardiovascular health issues. You got two organs, or you got an organ made of two, two organs, I should say, that handle salt. I'll tell you what that is when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information right after this. Any back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, challenge, health challenge you or a loved one is dealing with, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, questions about our Truth Skin Health products. If you've used our Truth Skin Health products, you want to comment. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, and we will get your calls here in just a moment. From the American Journal of Hypertension, frequent sauna bathing keeps blood pressure in check. I keep forgetting to talk about the importance of a good sauna, dry sauna. We talk about, about, uh, about uh, hot water and hot showers uh, as mechanisms for activating the parasympathetic rest and digest relaxation nervous system. Make no mistake about it, high blood pressure is not about salt. High blood pressure is about emergency. It's about something freaking the body out, 
Hypertension is a classic manifestation of an activated stress nervous system. It's a sign of a body in distress. The way you deal with hypertension is not to pre use prescription drugs, but to relax the body. Now, of course, you don't need a doctor for that. You don't need to stand in line at the pharmacy for that. You don't need an insurance company for that. And that's why we never hear about the importance of things like hot water and deep breathing and muscle relaxation. And now, frequent sauna bathing keeps blood pressure in check. From the American Journal of Hypertension, frequent sauna bathing reduces the risk of elevated blood pressure according to an extensive follow-up population-based study carried out at the University of Eastern Finland. They love their saunas in Finland. The risk of developing... Elevated blood pressure was nearly 50% lower among men who had a sauna four to seven times a week compared to men who had a sauna only once a week. Now, in a sauna, you can re amazing way to relax the body. You don't want to go too long in the sauna because that can that can activate the uh, uh, that can activate the stress nervous system. But uh, a couple of minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes in a sauna four to seven times a week can be a, a really really powerful part of an all around health strategy. Same researchers showed previously that frequent sauna bathing reduces the risk of sudden cardiac death and cardiovascular and all-cause mortality. Get a sauna. Get a dry sauna. Or they have these uh, infrared saunas now that you can put in your home. There's all kinds of ways we can keep our body healthy that don't involve the doctor, that don't involve the medical model. Are you going to hear this from the medical model? Probably not. Here's another good one. Meditation might be useful in a, uh, useful, meditation might be a useful addition to heart-healthy lifestyle and medical treatment. Meditation has the potential to reduce some risks for heart disease. No kidding. Again, activating the parasympathetic nervous system. I've had a meditation practice myself for almost 30 years, and I'm telling you, there are very few things that you can do in your life that are more important to your, for your health than meditation, and it isn't that hard. And meditate, you don't have to worry about your thoughts. That's what everybody worries about when they meditate, is our thoughts. Oh my God, I can't handle my thoughts. When you meditate, what ends up ha if you do it correctly, what ends up happening is you notice your thoughts for the first time. And it seems like your mind is going crazy. Well, that's happening all the time. We just don't notice it. But when you sit still and pay attention to your thoughts, you'll see your mind is bouncing back and forth, careening left and right, to and fro, up and down, going nuts. The trick is just to watch it. When you're watching it over the course, and by the way, it isn't that easy to just watch your thoughts. It can take decades to learn how to watch your thoughts, but it is so powerful and so important. Just the watching of your thoughts will lower your blood pressure. Watching is an amazing, amazing, important health strategy because it relaxes the body. Watching your heart rate, just, or your heartbeat, paying attention to your heartbeat, paying attention to the sounds in your body, paying attention to your thoughts, paying attention to ambient sounds in the environment. You know how many sounds are going on in the environment as we're just sitting still and we never pay attention to them? Just paying attention to the sounds in the environment, the air conditioner and the wind and the, uh, the computer and the whir of this and the hum of that. All the sounds that are going on in our rooms, seemingly silent rooms, when we start to pay attention, it's like a symphony of noises. Just paying attention to those sounds will lower your blood pressure. Just paying attention to those sounds will activate your rest and digest relaxation nervous system. Just paying attention to sounds or your thoughts will put you into a meditative state. And I know people say, oh, I, I walk and I meditate. That's when I... No, walking is, can be a meditation. There's walking meditation, but meditation is paying attention to something. Even if it's paying attention to a, a metronome, you can go into a meditative state. Just paying attention. Just paying attention will relax us. Just paying attention has a relaxing effect as opposed to thinking, as opposed to believing our thoughts. That's what most of us do is we think. We believe our thoughts. We're in our minds. Just paying attention to our bodies or ambient sounds or, 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 or our thoughts can put us in a meditative state, an alpha or theta brainwave state, if you like, activate the parasympathetic nervous system, anti-age us, help us fight disease, prevent disease, and certainly reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and lower blood pressure. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Robin in Oklahoma. Good morning, Robin. Welcome, welcome to the Bright Side. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing well. Um, I have recently... I've been suspecting it for a while, but I've recently got confirmation I have late stage Lyme disease. And yeah, well, hang on, because I'm I'm a big skeptic on that. How did you who, who confirmed it, and how do they confirm it? Uh, well, symptomatically, I have 
Forget have, symptoms. Uh, Those symptoms that could be anything. How do they confirm it was Lyme disease? Well, I had uh, one blood test that came back negative, and then I sent uh, had another blood test sent to California that came back positive. Positive for what? For Lyme. For, for what? The for, no, for the for BB, the... I can't. I can't pronounce the. Bird. How do they know you were bitten by a tick that, and you have Lyme disease? How do they know? I, they How does anybody know? How do they know? I know. I've pulled so you know off. you have symptoms. You know you have symptoms is what you know. You know that you have. Uh, what are your symptoms, by the way? Well, mostly mine are neurological. But how do you, years how do you know? How, the, here, and I'm, I'm, this is an important question because we make these associations and they divert us from the real causes. So you think it's tick. And you have this, uh, you got bit by a tick and you have this infection, which ba basically Lyme disease is, but that may be diverting you from the real causes of your problems. You follow what I'm saying? If it's a tick, you can't do anything about it. It's, you got an infection. You got, uh, and I'm not buying that if it's chronic, if, you, if it's cro a chronic condition. I can see an acute condition, acute problem, but when you're not, your body's not getting rid of it or it's not progressively getting worse, I I'm not buying that it's a, a Lyme disease. I think it's something else, personally. And the reason okay. it's important is because if we don't, we don't address the real causes, we'll never take care of the problem. So why don't, we, why don't you tell me your symptoms and let's see what we can do about it. Okay. Neurological. Uh, when you say neurological, what do you mean exactly? Uh, about seven months ago, it started. Um, the, of course, I've had fatigue for years. I mean, I've okay. called in and, and tried all your different protocols. Okay. But, and you've been fatigued. And, hmm? It, you've, had fatigue for, you've had fatigue for years. Okay. Yeah. But okay. about seven months ago, I uh, started doing, you know, having the numbness and, and the tingling and the, uh, the severe dizziness. And okay. The, so, you have uh, numb, so, so, so hang on, let's work on, well, I'm going to work with this slowly, okay? So you had the fatigue, okay. and, then seven month, uh, and then seven months ago, it progressed into um, uh, numbness, and what were the other things you said? Mental uh, fogginess? The, the mental fogginess, the okay. internal, the internal, okay. I have, you just cut out there, I'm sorry. So, well, we got to take a break. St stick with us, okay, Robin? Okay. Don't go away. Okay. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. We're talking to Robin in Oklahoma about Lyme disease. You there, Robin? Yes. Okay, so when you get bitten by a tick, and which is what Lyme disease, Lyme disease is, it's a tick bite, you're going to get, uh, you're, some, you're going to have some kind of reaction. You're going to have like flu-like symptoms, uh, muscle pain, joint pain. I'm not saying these things don't happen. Lyme disease is a real thing. It's when it's chronic that I become, I become skeptical because there's so many things that we do in our lives and there's so many things that are going on in our environment that can cause the so-called the, the symptoms of, of chronic Lyme disease. Now, did you have a rash anywhere? Uh, did you have a, a, like a flat raised rash that kind of got bigger and kind of looked weird, strange? Well, had, no, and, and not all people who have Lyme you know, exactly. It, That's my point. When you, you when you get bit, do that. Nah, exactly. It's what I'm saying to you, Robin. When you get bit by a tick, that's going to happen. You're not going to have a tick bite oh, without oh, that no. happening. Well, argue with you that I've been bitten five times just this year alone, and not one time. You never had a rash from a tick bite. I never had a rash. I, I, my husband's been bit seven times. No, this no. Year. Listen, li listen to what I'm saying. When you get bit by a tick and you're infected. Okay, when you get an infection from a tick, not when you're bit by a tick, only bit by a tick, but when you're bit by a tick and you're infected, follow me? Yeah. When you get an, an infection, you're going to have some kind of sign that there's an infection, a visible sign that there's an infection. Now, if you get bit by a tick and there's nothing, nothing happens, you didn't get an infection from that tick bite. That can happen. You're right. You don't necessarily have a tick, have a rash from a tick bite. But if you get infected with the with the Borrelia uh, burgdorferi uh, 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 bacteria from the tick, you're going to have a sign that you got the the infection, and it's going to be visible. Now, if you may miss it, you can say, well, I didn't see it, I didn't notice it, but it just sounds like there's so many, that's the symptomology that you're describing can be due to so many different things. Now, okay. 
Okay, now, now we're talking. So here's what I would do if I were you, okay? Because it must be miserable to have to live like that with you know, numbness and fatigue and all of these things. Uh, I always go with food. Now, you said you tried everything that I've talked about, so I assume you've done all the food things, the food diary and all of those things. To me, personally, yep. and, and the fact that you had adrenal fatigue issues before tells me there's something else going on, but I'm going to assume that you did that. This is what I would do if I were you. Go get some intravenous nutrition and intravenous, I have, glutathi- I have, int- I intravenous have. glutathione. Once a, once a week, I'm doing vitamin C with about 600 to, to 1,200 glutathione. Milligrams of glutathione. How about selenium and the B-complex? Yep. It's and all, B12? It's the, the Myers con- cocktail with glutathione push. Oh, that's awesome. Good for you. How did you know to do that? Uh, my naturopath. Good job on the naturopath. So keep doing the IV nutrition. And you've done the food thing? Yes. I've, how's, I've, your, how's your height to weight? You don't have to tell me any numbers, but how's your height to weight? Uh, I'm 5'8", and I weigh about 147 pounds, which, by the way, in the last seven months, I've lost 32 pounds for no reason other than I'm on a good diet. But Well, I mean, I've got well don't ever say you're on a good diet because you don't know. You know. There's no way to know whether you're on a good diet except for your symptoms, and your symptoms say you're not. So we don't know that. But here's what I'm telling you. If, you suspect, if you're blaming the Lyme for it, the tick bite for it, then you're missing something. There's so many different things that can go wrong in the body. Have you had your cortisol checked? Yes. Where's your cortisol? It's got to be through the roof. Uh, literally. She said, I've never seen anybody's literally off the yeah. chart. So we've, that, we've been that, treating cortisol. Every one for- of your, ha, uh, Rob, hang on just a moment, okay? Every one of your symptoms that you're describing, the numbness, the mental issues, the fatigue issues, the feeling like crap, generally feeling like crap, which I'm assuming you're saying, can be due to elevated cortisol. Now, you can say, well, the elevated cortisol is Lyme disease. Well, there's lots of things that can elevate the cortisol. Psychological things can elevate the cortisol. Food can elevate the cortisol. Low, uh, uh, hypoxia, low, uh, low blood oxygen can lower the cortisol. The point I'm making is you've got to control what you can control. And those are elements that you can control. How are you, how's your sleep? You're probably not sleeping very well either, right? I went in March and I went three weeks with about 15 hours sleep. Yeah, it's terrible. All of those things can cause every, every one of your symptoms. So there's where you got to start working, relaxing the body, muscle, rela- are you doing any massage or, or rela- bu- I, uh, rela- I, relaxation? Technique? I have been, I've done, I have done everything. I have, I'm treating my adrenals. I do the infrared sauna. Are you I doing, do. are you doing, you're on a good nutritional supplement program, correct? Oh, well, I've got. Like a daily supplement program. Absolutely. What are you absolutely. using, what are you using daily? Well, I'm using, well, of course I have tangy tangerine and I'm using uh, glutathione, extra glutathione. All right, listen, Robin, listen, I want to work with you, okay? I want to help you out. I don't think it's Lyme disease. I want to work with you. Will you send me an email and put your phone number there? Hang on, I gotta write it down. I, okay, send me your phone number. I'm gonna call you personally. I'm gonna work with you, and we're gonna we're gonna right. take care of you. All right. Hang on, okay. I had to go outside. To well, get I gotta get to some more calls here. Let me, I'm gonna know, give it to you. I don't, I don't I'm gonna give it to you real quick, and then you can go to the archives and get it. It's very easy. Ben, that's my name at k s c o dot com. King Sam Cat Oscar. I got a whole bunch of calls I want to get to. I'm running out of time. Okay. Okay, so call, put, your, put your phone number there. I'm going to work with you, okay? Thanks, Ben. Okay, Robin, take care. I, just, I have a problem with that whole Lyme disease thing, to tell you the truth. All right, let's go to uh, 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 John, the underwear guy. What's going on, John? Hey, good morning. How you doing? Uh, nothing. Just wanted to give a progress report today. I don't mm-hmm. really have any serious questions. Okay. Uh, but I wanted to say it out to the audience there, because I'm just, I can't be a more regular Joe than there is out here. You know, I'm a truck driver. I'm, I live in a very small environment. But, you know, I've been following your protocol for, I don't know, probably about six, eight months, maybe a year or more. I get up every morning. I have a little uh, nightly essence. I have my fiber drink, my fiber pudding. Uh, I have a little sauerkraut. Uh, and then I do my, uh, do my exercises. I jog in place for about three minutes, like you jog on your little bouncer, only I do it right, right inside of my truck. And I just I ketogenic diet, uh, tangy tangerine, of course, all the all the supplements. And I just wanted to say that, you know, everything works so well for me. Uh, That's awesome. You know, I, stool, I remember seeing. I, I, I just for the listeners, I saw John about a year a year and a half ago at the convention, and he looks amazing. How old are you, John? 
Uh, 66 now. And, and you were way that. overweight, right? Did you have a weight problem? Uh, yeah, about 50. I dropped about 50 pounds, and then I just That's leveled awesome. out. Right where I should be. And, you're uh, looking. You're looking great, and you're motivated. W- w- the best thing about you is you're motivated, that, and that's really what it takes. It takes motivation. Oh. You have to want it. It's like anything in life. You have to want it, oh. and that's really. I had a skin, w- had a skin problem too. That that uh, it worked itself out. Took that took about eight months, but my skin has just totally changed as well. I mean, that's, everything that's awesome. that you're talking about actually works. Good, that's what John. I, I, got, I, I want to get some more calls. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Drive safe, no buddy, and have a good day. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. All right, uh, let's go real quickly here to uh, – let's go to Karen real quickly. What's going on, Karen? Got about a minute or two. Oh, hi, Ben. Um, I was at my uh, gym last week on Friday and got on this little thing that looks like a scale, and the lady kind of freaked out and said that my inflammation level is off the chart. On the and scale? I had from the yeah, scale? it kind of looks like a scale, and it measures your body mass and weight. Well, inflammation is, is, very, is a very common response. Inflammation means defense. The body defends itself by inflaming. Now, she I'm not sure how I she could tell. the inflammation level of somebody that had a severe injury or Something's getting into your system. Both, and I something's have neither. Get, I must be stressed. Okay, that means, listen, Karen, I've got to go real quick. But sure. something's getting into your system that your body doesn't like. Think food. And inflammation is a very common, uh, very common. Most people are going to be inflamed as they get older because we eat the wrong foods. Sugar will mess it up, uh, will compound the problem, and insulin as well, and then the stress hormone cortisol. Get on the Healthy Start Pack, do a food diary, and uh, uh, maybe a uh, Swero V cleanse, and then a food diary, and elimination diet. See what foods you're having a problem with, number one. Get on the Healthy Start Pack, number two. And then I'd start working with digestive health using the Nightly Essence and also the Fucoid Z. And also perhaps apple cider vinegar with meals and the ultimate enzymes with, ultimate enzymes with meals as well. Hey, I, got, I want to get one more call in. Thank you so much, Karen, for your call. appreciate it. And Carl, the Truth Raider, you get the last word, brother. Hey, good morning, Ben. I want to talk about Conquer Grapes. And Love there are them. subsidiary grapes, muscadine version called Steubens. Yes, grapes are a power food, but there's a couple problems with grapes, Carl the Truth Raider. They're very small, and they get lots of pesticides. And so the grape, the grape itself can be saturated with poison, unfortunately. And even if it's from an organic source, even if it's organic, I was going to say, if they're watered with regular water, and a lot of times organic farms use just regular water, the water itself contains pesticides. And because the grape is so small, it's very easy to become saturated with that stuff. So while grapes are highly medicinal and have wonderful properties, uh, you want to take you want to take it easy on the grapes. Really take it easy. I mean, still use them, but you don't have pounds of them. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's what you want to stay away from is pounds of grapes. There's a big problem with with breast cancer in Napa in, in wine country there's a big problem with breast cancer and also multiple sclerosis and that a lot of folks are attributing that to the grapes all right that's all the time we have for today folks thanks so much for listening to the bright side I'm pharmacist Ben please check out my websites brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com for blog post news stories the longevity products and also our truth treatments at truthtreatments.com have a wonderful awesome beautiful spectacular day I'm pharmacist Ben we'll talk to y'all later bye for now 